Well, good evening, everybody. Hey, 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 hey. Y'all come on in. Yes. Let it purify our hearts. God bless y'all. Thank y'all for joining this evening. Go ahead, like, tag, and share. Yes. Send it fire, Lord. Yes. We need the fire. Come on, y'all. We need the fire. Come on. Give me some hearts. Show me some love. We need the fire. It's my desire. I miss you too, Jackie. Hello, Miss Fine Glenn, girl. God bless y'all. We need the fire. Burn it up, Lord. Burn it up. We need the fire. Yes. We need the fire. Come on, Chris. We need the fire. Come on. Come on. We need the fire. We got to have it. Yes. We need it. Send it down. Oh, okay. She's doing way in Bradenton, girl. Send it down. Yes. Yes. Let it fall. Let it fall on me. Woo! Let it fall on me. Let it fall. So the world can see. Come on, the world want to see that God is real. Come on, the world want to see this God that we serve in. Come on, this Jehovah that we talking about. Yes, congratulations, Jackie. Yes. So the world can see. Come on, we need it. Yes, let it follow me, woman of God, Priscilla, yes. We need it. We need it. Come on, like, tag, and share. Come on, the fire finna fall this evening. We need it. Come on, the enemy trying to take so many people out. Come on, the enemy trying to take you out. He's trying to take your family out. Come on, he's trying to make you lose your mind. Come on, we need the fire. That same fire that spoke to Moses out of the burning bush. Come on, that same fire that Elijah called down from heaven. We need it. Come on, you can act like you don't need it if you want to. Gotta have it. Gotta have it. Can't move without it. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Let's praise God this evening up in here. Let's give God some praise on a, on a Sunday evening. On a Sunday evening, 
Come on, right there in your living room, in your car, riding down the road, wherever you are. Come on, you can still give God some praise. Hallelujah. So I come to exalt his name today. Come on, I came to lift up his name today. Why don't you go ahead, like, tag, and share this video today? Because somebody need to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say today. Come on, I titled this message, When God Seems Silent. I know there are some people out there, they're probably wondering, God, where you at? God, where you at? God, don't you hear my cry? God, don't you hear me, God? I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Thank you for sharing, Mildred. I'm doing all I know how to do. And seem like the more I do it, seem like the harder things get. But I need to let you know today. I stopped by today. Come on, I was minding my own business. And the Holy Spirit said, you got to go share with the world today. You got too much. You're packing too much. Your testimony is too powerful. Come on, the word of God that's in you is weighty. It's heavy. The glory needs to be revealed. Come on in and share with my people today. Somebody needs to be encouraged today. Somebody need to be encouraged. Somebody need to be enlightened. Somebody need to hear a word from God today. When it seems like God is silent in your life and ain't nothing working for you. But I need to let you know today that God, the Bible says he neither slumber and neither do he sleep. So while we sleeping, come on, God say I'm woke, baby, because I don't slumber, neither do I sleep. And I'm always up to something. I am always up to something, getting my purpose and my plan out in the earth. Come on, because of a covenant that we have with him and because of a covenant that he has with heaven, that he wants to use mankind, that he wants to use mankind. You ought to give God a praise today. Amen. That God found you worthy enough. That you even see enough value in yourself that God wants to use you to get his glory out in the earth. The Bible say that we are carriers of his glory. The word of God say the heaven belongs to God, but the earth belongs to the son of men. And God say, I will give the heathens. I will give the heathens. I will give you the heathens for your inheritance. And then Daniel said, God loves getting into the affairs of men. Come on, can I just say, can I just, can I just bring it in a ghetto term? God dig getting into the affairs of man. Come on, God loves getting into your business and my business. Honey, that's his business because we are carriers of his glory. And because he's responsible for our glory, Narissa. Come on, God say, I got to get in there. That's right, such a mighty move of God on today, girl. I'm still rejoicing. I am still rejoicing and I'm still high. Just still thinking about what God did today in our midst. What God did today among the saints. See, that's the power of training. Amen? That's the power of training. And that's the power of being developed. And that's the power of being cultivated. That's the power of inviting the Holy Spirit in. And not just doing traditional church. Come on, but got our minds on the kingdom. How many know God is the kingdom of God? Amen? The kingdom of God is in you. It is in you. It is in you. And so I'm still, I'm still rejoicing how God just showed out today. He showed up and he showed out today in our midst, y'all. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost was in the house. The Holy Ghost was in the house. And what I love about training, this, this is one of the most beautiful things I love about training. Because training, see, training makes the saints accountable. Training makes the saints accountable. It takes a lot of pressure off of the preacher. Amen. And training provokes you. It challenges you to learn who God is. Not learn of God, but to learn who God is. Who God is. See, I know who he is to you. Thank you for sharing, Sister Edith. I know who, I know who you say he is. But see, I need to know him for myself. See, that the woman at the well, come on, the Bible say that uh, when she went and told everybody her testimony and by, about what Jesus did for her, it say many people came to the Lord because of the saying of the woman. But the Bible say that they asked Jesus to abode with them for a few days. And because he abode with them for a few days, they say we no longer believe because of what the woman said. But we have tried him for our own selves. Come on. So her testimony got the people to Jesus. But after, they, after the testimony drew the people to Jesus... Come on, the people say, the Bible say the people had an experience with God. They had an experience with God. And they say, we no longer believe 
because of the what, what the woman said, but we have tried him for our own self. And that's the beauty of training because people get to know who God is for themselves. See, if I give you a fish, Sister Bobby, if I give you a fish, you're going to be limited. But if I teach you how to fish, hello, you can go get as much as you want, baby. You can, you can, you, you can get as much as you want. There's no limitations. But if I teach you how to depend on me all the time, then you're going to be limited at what you can get. Because sometimes you may not be able to get me. But let me teach you how to fish. I dare you to let me just teach you how to fish, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and get into this word today. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Esther. This is where our training came from today, from Esther. And I'm telling you, the prophet was all over the house today. See, that's the beauty of the grace of God. See, the Bible say in Ephesians 2 and 20, I don't care what the devil say. The Bible say in Ephesians 2 20, the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. So unless you got you an apostle or you got you a prophet in your midst, guess what? You are missing. You are missing the beauty of who God is. I guarantee you just doing church. You just doing a performance. You just going to church and say, I went to church, but ain't nothing happening. You're not changing. You're not being challenged. You're not being, you're not having that encounter. Why? Because it's the, it's not the foundation. And see the Bible say there's no foundation. Paul said there is no other foundation that a man can lay that the foundation that has already been laid. And so the church is so jacked up right now in a lot of places because she don't want to acknowledge who God is, the apostles and the prophets. See, people love to do, people love doing their own thing. But when you get out of the way and when God's business, when your business become God's business, and when we allow, when this thing ain't about us no more, when it ain't about us, honey, when it become about God, honey, it's a wrap then. It's a wrap, game over. But I want to talk to you today a little bit about Esther. Now, many times as I read this story, and I'm just going to give it to you in a synopsis today because I can't give it all. I can't do it line upon line and precept upon precept. But I am going to give you one scripture, and that's um, that's right, woman, God, religious and religion. But as many times as I've read the story or studied the story about Esther, I have never saw the glory of God in the way that I saw it this time. And that's the beauty of God's word because, see, God's word is a living word. You might go on in there. That's right. I need y'all to pray for me. You might go in there and you might get a revelation for the season that you're in. But then all depends on what season you're in. God will minister to you out of that season because he's faithful to his word. He's faithful to his word. Now we see here today, uh, Esther. And what I love about it is, like I said, it's one of the most beautiful stories that I've ever read. And how God ministered to me this time. I'm getting hot already, y'all. But how God ministered to me this time, it was a little bit, it was a little bit different. It was a little bit different. Um, but it was, it was, it was yet still beautiful. It was so beautiful because God's name is not even mentioned in the book of Esther. Nowhere in the book of Esther will you see God's name mentioned, but the providence of God is right there. The providence of God is right there. So God is working even when you can't see him working. God is always moving even when we cannot see him moving. So you may be going through something in your life right now and you may feel like God don't hear you. God does hear you, but you got to get in place with God and you got to have the right people in your life. Amen. To for God to begin to position you in a place where you need to be positioned so you can win the battles. So you don't just do church no more that you now become kingdom minded. Let me make sure I got my AC on the right thing, y'all. Okay. Y'all just hold on for one minute. Y'all keep showing them harsh. Thank y'all for keeping them hearts coming. They laugh at me all the time because I have my air conditioner up real high. 
Because I, I don't really like it too cold, y'all. Amen. But I guess I'm getting a little hot because I'm preaching. But anyway, um, sometimes you may think God is not moving in your life, but you got to get in the right place. And Esther had to do that. So here we see in the story here, you know, we see that Esther and them, we see that uh, the Jews has came out of captivity. They came out of captivity and all of them did not go back to Jerusalem. Some of them stayed over in Persia. Some of them stayed over in Persia. And so now uh, they're under the leadership of King Axaros. You know, we can't pronounce these names right in the Bible. But anyway, they're under this king, uh, kingship. And uh, one of the, the prime ministers, well, let me, let, me, let me back up. So we know the king had a party. King had a party for 180 days. See, y'all don't, don't know, y'all don't, don't party for real. We just have a little party one night. But this king had a party for 180 days. And after he had this party for 180 days, he invited everybody. Everybody. I mean, they was drinking. The Bible said they was, everybody was drinking what they want to drink. Everybody was, you know, just having a good time, doing what they want to do. And all of a sudden, because the king, he was the king, his queen at that time was named Vasti. And we know the king sent for Vasti because he wanted to show her beauty. He probably wanted to show her big booty off. He probably wanted to show her big boobs off. You know how it is when you get drunk? You know how it is when you get drunk and you drinking, you know, you just want to, you want to show out. You're under the influence. So you do things that you don't normally do. So anyway, Vastai refused to come. And because she refused to come, amen, he got with all of his advisors. And he said, what are we going to, what, what are we going to do about this sister? What are we going to do about this sister? And at the hands of his advisors, at the council of his advisors, they say, you better get rid of Vastai because she's going to have all these women uh, disobeying their husbands. And so uh, they got rid of Vesta. He got rid of Vesta. Fast forward it a little bit. But there had to, has to be a queen because the king has to have a queen. And so several women were chosen. And out of all the women that were chosen, Esther was chosen to be queen because of her beauty. She was chosen to be queen because of her beauty and her uncle Mordecai because Esther's parents had died. In a, Esther parents had died. And because her parents had died, her mother was dead and her father was dead. So her uncle takes her up under his wings and he began to mentor her. He began to develop her. He began to cultivate her. You know, I always share with y'all Jeremiah 1 and 12 is one of my favorite scriptures. You know, God said he watches over his word to perform it. And so see, this was not new to God that the Jews were going to be going into captivity and they were going to be looking at death. This was not new to God. The Bible said God is omnipotent. He's omnipotent. He's omniscience. He knows everything. He knows everything, y'all. So he already knew this. But now as the children of God, okay, as Esther is chosen, now, come on, uh, Haman comes on the scene, who is a prime minister. And Haman came out of the Amalekites' bloodline. When God told Saul over in uh, Samuel, the first thing is 1 Samuel 15, when God told Saul to get rid of all the Amalekites, get rid of everything, get rid of the cows, the dogs, the cats, the children. How many know God will wipe out a nation? And because these people was worshiping so many idol gods, God told Sam, I mean, told Saul to get rid of them. But Saul spared the king, Agai. Come on, a Agai, AJ. You know how they, like I say, you can't get these names right. But anyway, Haman comes out of this bloodline. Mordecai is a Jew, which is God's chosen people. Uh, Haman wants Mordecai to bow to him. You know how sometimes people want you to bow to them? They want you to recognize who they are because they feel like they're some type of God. And because Mordecai knew who God was, he wasn't bowing to the devil. He was not finna bow to the devil. See, some of y'all bowing to the wrong thing. Some of y'all selling out because you don't want to stay on the street called narrow. You don't want to stay on the street called straight. So you, will, you want to be part of the trend. You want to be part of culture. You want to be part of the, the, you know, the like me crowd. You want everybody that likes you. You want everybody to be your friend. You want everybody to just, you know, approve of what you're doing. But I need to let you know today, it don't matter what you do for people. Honey, she gonna, people still, that don't mean that they still going to like you. You cannot buy relationship. You cannot buy friendship. You got to understand your identity. You got to understand who you are because if you don't, you'll be traveling the wilderness through your emotions, trying to fit in what God ain't called you to be a part of.
So anyway, Haman wants Mordecai to bow to him, and Mordecai refuses to bow. And because he refuses to bow, he goes to the king and have an intense anger, have a very, very intense hatred for Mordecai. And so he goes to the king and have the king to write, to sign into law, amen, to kill, that the Jews would be killed. Come on, that's, that's how serious this devil is, y'all. See, we don't, want to, you, 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 we, don't, we don't want to look at this thing how it really, really is. See, you don't know, people will kill you through your emotions. People will have you angry. People will cause your adrenaline to go up. People will cause the chemicals in your body, come on now, to begin to be unbalanced. You will, be, you will have migraine headaches and don't even know why you got them. You will have headaches. You will have stomach ache. You, you will have pain in your body sometimes and don't even know why you got it. But it's because sometimes of the relationships that are toxic that we're in and they put pressure on us. Come on. And it begins to, it begins to cause us to begin to, to be disfigured in God. So he goes to the king and tell the king, you know what? This, 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 this person don't want to respect who I am. And so because he was a prime minister, he had a level of authority to get to the king. So the king write the decree. We're going to kill all these Negroes. Come on. The king write the decree. We're going to depopulate the African-American culture. So we're going to write a law. We're going to put a law that if they sell drugs, come on, we're going we're gonna, to we're lock them up in prison and we're going to give them 20 to life. Come on now, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna pass some laws, amen, to keep these people in captivity because you got to realize that Haman is dealing with government. He's dealing with a governmental authority, the one that has that pen that know how to set up plots. So his assignment was to set up the Jews, to kill all the Jews. And when God, when I was studying this, even on last night, God said, there's an assignment out to kill the African-American culture. There's an assignment out to destroy you. Come on. That's why the enemy don't want you to read. That's why he don't want you to understand who God is. He don't care nothing about you going to church, but just don't get to know who God is. Come on. So they write laws. They put laws into effect to cause man to go into captivity. Come on now. So you got to know how the devil work. So they set up a law. Come on, they even got, they even brought this thing in called COVID. And how many African Americans died? Y'all don't want to have no church today. But the majority of the people died was African Americans. Why? Because they instilled fear into the people. And I'm not saying COVID was not real. And I'm not even saying the COVID Delta they got out there is not real. But what is your motive behind doing what you're doing? Why you're so wicked in high places that you want to destroy God's people. And God say, I can't even get no intercessors. He said, I didn't want to destroy the city, but I couldn't even get nobody to pray. I didn't want to destroy the land, but I couldn't even find no intercessors. So guess what? Let me send out this, this, this disease. Let me send out this virus called COVID. And I'm going to put so much fear in the people. And because they don't understand that the Bible says men's hearts is going to fail them because of fear. So people are having heart attacks. People are having anxiety attacks. Come on, people are having all kind of attacks. People are actually living in torment. They are living in fear because the Bible says fear has torment. And it's all because of the government. Y'all don't want to have no church right now. See, we just want to go to church. But we don't want to understand what's going on with all of these laws that are being made that will bound and, 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 and keep people in captivity. So the enemy said, I got to depopulate them. And the only way I can depopulate them is to go drop some drugs into their community. Come on, go drop some drugs into their community. Have them to sell the drugs. Come on, and then I'm going to send them to my private prisons. And as the prophet say today, if it's a private prison, that means it's a business. Y'all better wake up. We better wake up. They got too many systems. There are too many systems that has been designed to destroy God's people. But God said, come on, I got me some Esthers that are on the scene. God said, I got some Esthers that have been behind the scene. And you thought God was not working in your life. And see, because Esther could not reveal her identity. But let me back up a little bit. So when Mordecai uh, got, the, got, the, got the information that Haman was finna destroy the Jews, he got word to Esther, well, one of Esther um, units, one of her um, servants, I'm going to say his name was Hatach, came and told Esther that Mordecai was at the gate. 
and he was looking real, real bad, and he was in distress. So she wanted to know what was going on. So once she got the news of what was going on, amen, then uh, Mordecai gave her some instructions. See, you, you got to let somebody in your life give you some instructions. We got too many people in life, and you don't want nobody to tell you what to do. The Bible says wisdom is too high for a fool, and fools despise knowledge and wisdom. Some people just want to just go to church. Some of y'all just want to play church. But see, Esther had a purpose in the kingdom. Her beauty got her in the palace. Come on. But the anointing that was on her life got her into her purpose. So her uncle Mordecai began to coach her, and he began to mentor her, and he began to tell her, you got to go see the king. You got to go see the king because the king is the, is the one that has signed this executive order. And so now that this executive order has been signed, that two men can be married, that two women can get married, it's going to pollute our generation. It's going to pollute our nation. Soon as they sign the law that transgressors got rights, come on, to go in the bathroom with your little girl and your little boy, come on, then guess what? Once that law is into motion, baby, you can fuss all you want to. Come on. You can, you, can, you can do anything you want. You can twist and turn all you want to. Because, but because, see, you don't understand that God law override every law. Because the constitution of God, which was his word, was here first. It was here first, but because we don't know that, then we don't know how to legislate that. We don't know how to legislate that, and we don't know how to veto that. But God say, I'm raising up some people that going to legislate, going to veto, and going to take it down. I'm raising up some people that going to meet the enemy head on in the realm of the spirit. Come on. And going to tell the devil when I meet you in that high place, this is what God say. This is what the word say. And heaven is going to bite it. Because guess what? God say heaven and earth going to pass away. But my word is going to always stand. God say I just need some people out there. I just need a few people. Not a whole lot. Because the whole lot, you know, the Bible say the road is narrow, but the road to destruction is broad. God said, I just need a few people. I just need a few people that will come into my chambers. I just need a few people, amen, that will allow the kings to summons them, come on, to go meet the king. So Esther knew, Esther knew that there was no way that she can go meet the king without permission. Even though that was her husband, she didn't have permission. And she knew if you did not get an invitation to go see the king. And if you're caught in the king's court. Come on baby. That means death. That means death. That means death. So Esther began to allow the orphan. That was in her. See that's why y'all got to get healed from them orphan spirits. You got to get healed from abandonment. You got to get healed from rejection. You got to get healed from insecurity. You got to get healed from church hurt. You got to get healed from all of your issues. That keeps you away from God. You got to get healed from all of that stuff. Come on, that's binding you up. That's causing you to have an excuse not to do what God called you to do. It's time to be healed for real, y'all. So Esther, so the orphan spirit, the orphan, her, the orphan part of her emotions, come on, begin to kick in. And Esther begin to say, I, I, I can't go there. I'm, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I can't go before the king. I, I, you just don't do that. You know, you got to have permission to go before this man. You just don't understand. But let me tell you what Mordecai told his sister, y'all. And this is what God is saying to you today, too, as well. If you don't get in position, your family, you're losing your family. Your family is in crises. Your family, you're, you're taking, you're suffering too many losses already right now. You got too many people in prison. You got too many in jail. You got too many that are dying early before their time. You got too many that are being caught up in a system. Amen. And we act like we paralyzed or we act like we got to depend on a system that is working against you to do what God wants you to do. But this is what Mordecai told his sister in, uh, in uh, Esther 4 and 14. It says, for if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time. Then shall, then there, it say, then, if you hold your peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou in thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knows whether thou art come to the kingdom of God for such a time as this. 
So Mordecai told that sister, you can hold your peace if you want to. You can, look, you can stay on silent. You can stay on mute if you want to. You can stay, I don't want to be persecuted. You know, you can stay, you know, trying to be cute. You can stay trying to put up with the crowd. You can stay saying, I don't want to say nothing to her because I don't want her to get mad with me. You know, you see what's going on. You see the enemy destroying the bloodline. You see the enemy is destroying your generation. You see the enemy destroying your community. You see what the enemy is doing, but you won't say nothing. But because Hezekiah, I'm, I'm sorry, Mordecai knew about the covenant of God. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Mordecai knew what Psalm said, that God said, I made a covenant that I will not alter the words that have came out of my mouth. Neither will I change my mind about what I said. So when God say something, y'all, it's a, it's a deal. It's a wrap. But just because you don't do it, don't mean it ain't going to get done. He told her, if you don't do it, deliverance is going to rise from another place. But and, and guess what? And if you don't do it, and if these people happen to die, you're going to die with them too. You're going to die with them too. Why? Because you won't say nothing. You won't investigate. You won't read. You won't get in your Bible. You won't research. You won't dig. You know, they say if you want to keep black people dumb, put it in a book because that ain't, they ain't going to read. What is, a, what is that for somebody to sit back and begin to analyze this culture, begin to analyze this race, to say something like that? Is there any truth to it? You ask yourself tonight, how much do you read? How much do you study? How much do you investigate? Or do you just take whatever, whatever is being dished out to you? Do you just take it and say, you know what? God going to work it out. You know, we good at that. Oh, God going to work it out. He is going to work it out. He's going to work it out when you put your hands to the gospel plow. He is going to work it out when you operate in your faith. He is going to operate it out when you become educated and you become trained and you become equipped. So you would know how to go in and you would know how to do war. When you would know how to do battle. That's when you're going to win the battle. So you can continue to sit there if you want to and say, oh, yeah, God going to do it. Oh, God, God got this. Yeah, God got it. The Bible said we were created to be his workmanship, baby. That means we are partners with Christ. That means God say, I'll work with you if you work with me. Come on. If you don't do nothing, then guess what? Just like Mordecai say, who knows? Who knows? If you don't get up and do something, that deliverance, if it don't come from you, Esther, it's going to come from somebody else. And God is going to raise up somebody else, y'all, that you, something that you should have been doing. And you're going to be hating and you're going to be mad and you're going to every time you see them people open up their mouth. Every time you see them do what God has called them to do. All you're going to be able to do is say, you know what? God told me to do the life. You know what? God told me to write the book. You know what? God showed me to told me to share my testimony. You know, God told me to do this and God told me to do that. But I did not do it. Why? Because I feared what the people were going to say about me. God told me to go, you know, to, to, to sit up under this person. And God told me to go connect with this person. But I done talked about that person. And I done low rated that person. And I done came into agreement with the, the, the coming against the characteristics of that person. Now I got too much shame to humble myself to go get connected with the right person that God has called me to get my Mordecai to get connected with that would give me instructions on what to do. What the enemy is doing because see Mordecai understood law. He understood law. Since I've been over here in government and I'm a commissioner, I've always, I've always had a passion for law. I've always been a researcher, always been a digger. My apostle, before he passed away, he said, girl, you should have been a private investigator. Let me get me a drink of water. My apostle told me, he said, girl, you should have been a private investigator. He said, because you don't let nothing go. I'm a digger. I'm a researcher. I'm not going to take what you just tell me and ride it out. Oh, no, baby. I need some facts to back up what is, what is being said. So since being over here in government and being a commissioner, I understand law even the more. I understand structure. I understand law. I understand the foundation even the more. Whatever's in that law, 
Baby, let me tell you something. They don't, over here, they don't, they don't play with your emotions. Over here in government, honey, they don't play with your emotions. These people, they're not thinking about your emotions. They will tell you quickly, this is what stature so-and-so so say. They will tell you quick, this is what this law say. And guess what? They're going to go by the law. They're going by the law. I think over in Isaiah 10, Isaiah say they took the pen and they made a law. They made a law, amen, to take the widows and the fatherless into captivity and cause them to be a prey. Everything, baby, is law. Haman wrote, I mean, Haman had this man to sign a law. Haman wrote the law and had him to sign it. But when Mordecai found out about it, Mordecai, God had called Mordecai to stand in the gap. God done called you to stand in the gap. You don't understand the power and the authority that you have. Come on, as a man or a woman of God or as a vessel of God, you don't understand the apostolic commission. You don't understand that you are authorized. You don't understand. Baby, That let me tell you something. When you walk in God's word, hello, honey, heaven bites you. Heaven bites you is the word, y'all. So anyway, let me keep on with the story because I got to get through here. So Haman tells, uh, I mean, so Mordecai gives Esther the instructions. Esther, you know, she, she kind of kicked against it a little bit. But after Mordecai wouldn't let her back up, he said, you know what? You're going to die and everybody's going to die. But deliverance is going to come from another place because the Jews are God's chosen people. And guess what? God has made a covenant that he will never, ever destroy, amen, his creation, what he created. So he's going to fight for us. So now she makes up her mind. So now she comes back and she said, well, you know what? She sent word back. Say, tell Mordecai, assemble the Jews, assemble everybody, and let us call for a fast. Assemble the Jews that are here, and we're going to go on a three-day fast. We're going to go on a three-day fast, and we're going to pray. This is where the sovereignty of God comes in at. Even though God's name ain't mentioned in the, in, in the book of Esther, come on, Esther began to carry out that attribute of Fasting and praying. See, sometimes you got to fast and you got to pray. Some of y'all don't want to turn your plate down. Some of y'all eat too much anyway. But you don't want to make a sacrifice. You just want God to come down and just come down and do it. No. She called for a fast. She put pressure on heaven. She called for a three-day fast. And she called for her posse to fast with her and pray with her. Because how many know there's power in unity? There's power when you can get, uh, you get united with just a few people. And the Bible say they fasted and they prayed. They fasted and they prayed. And the Bible say in the fifth chapter, come on, Esther came out, baby. The Bible say the sister dressed up, put on her royal robe. She put on her royal apparel. Come on. And she went to the king's house. Come on. This sister done went to another level. Her faith has been level. Her faith has been elevated. That's why you got to get somebody in your life that's going to force you into your destiny. You got to get somebody in your life that won't buy your excuses. You got to get somebody in your life, your life and say, yeah, baby, I know what you say. I know what you're feeling. But can I just tell you what God's words say? Can I tell you how this thing's supposed to operate? Can I just really, really tell you how this thing's supposed to go? Can I just be your midwife? Come on, can I be your prophet for a minute? Come on, can I just push you out of that comfort zone? Can I, can I, can I, can I tell you what God say? I know you're feeling, you know, kind of insecure right now. I know you're feeling like you, you, you got an eighth grade education, girl, and you dropped out of school and you tested on the first grade level. And I know you've been rejected by the world. But can I tell you that from your mother's womb, you were loved by God all the time. Can I tell you from your mother's womb that God already had this plan set up for you? Why you thought God was silent? God was working behind the scene, baby. God was getting ready to elevate you. God was getting ready to promote you. God was getting ready to take you to another level. God was getting ready to take you boldly to a place that you ain't never, ever even been before. God ready to take you into the per some perimeters. Come on, baby. That you would probably say, God, are you really, really real? Is this really real? Sometimes you have to pinch yourself to see, am I really, really in a place that one time I was an orphan? Come on, my mama died, my daddy died. I can't use that for an excuse. I grew up in a foster home. I grew up being molested. I grew up being rejected. I grew up being hated. I grew up being alone. I grew up all these stories. Come on, get in line. I got yours. Come on. But now it's a new season. This is the reason that I was born for. And my pain has now become my purpose. 
My pain has now become my purpose. My pain is now my testimony. Come on, y'all. See, you thought the devil was trying to destroy you, but God wouldn't let the devil destroy you because of the providence, because of the sovereignty of who he was, because he knew that you, you call yourself the black sheep of the family. I just heard the Holy Ghost say that. Some of y'all always, I'm the black sheep of the family. You know, don't nobody like me. They always hating you. Honey, they can hate all they want to. Come on, they, they can hate all they want to, but the love of God will override all of that. I can't see none of y'all come here because I ain't got my glasses on right now. But I see y'all. But guess what? Esther put on her royal robe, y'all. Let me tell y'all what the sister did. Can I go back to the book for a minute? Esther put on her royal robe. It said, now it came to pass on the third day. Somebody say the third day. The third day when the sister coming out of her fast, when she come out of that place where she been praying and fasting, the Bible say on the third day, Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house. Come on now, the sister went on in, y'all. The sister went to a whole nother level. You ought to go and share this video right now because I already know you know somebody that needs to hear this right here. You know somebody that's down in the valley and they need to come out. On the third day, Brandy, the Bible said the sister put on her royal clothes, went into the inner court of the king's house, over, the, over to the king, against the king's house. Come on now. And the king sat up on his royal throne. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. In the royal house, over against the gate of the house. Come on, when he saw that sister coming. Woo, Sister Linnell. Pastor Linnell, when he saw that sister coming, the Bible say the man of God, come on. He stood up. He said to another place, come on. That go my queen. Come on. That go my queen. Look at God. Look at Proverbs 21 and 1. Y'all don't want to have no church right now. Look at the constitutions of God. Look at the policies of God. Look at the wisdom of God. And he, and so when he, when the king saw Esther, when he saw Esther, Brandy, when he saw her, when he saw the Esther, the queen standing in the court, that she, that she obtained favor in his sight. See, when you got favor, come on, you don't need no money. You just need some favor. Come on. A lot of these things y'all trying to get with your own strength of your flesh, with your intellect. Come on with your way of doing things. You just need to drop your attitude today. You need to drop the competition spirit. You need to drop all of that and say, God, what was I created for? What is my uniqueness? Who am I, God? Reveal to me who I am. God, show me how you want to do it. I don't want to do it like one need to bind them. I don't want to do it like Paula Price. I don't want to do it like Nona Parker. I want to do it like God. How you want me to carry out this thing? How you want me to navigate your purpose in the earth? Come on, because God is so creative, y'all. He is so unique. And you're trying to pattern yourself after somebody else. It say the queen stood up and she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter, y'all. Come on now. The girl, come on. The Bible says she found favor in the sight of the king. Y'all know what that means. Because he already is her husband. Because she's already the queen. But God done took this thing to another level. Because see, if the Gentile, who he was a Gentile, he wouldn't have never married a Jew. He never, because Esther, Esther identity still ain't been revealed yet. They had to hide that thing. Come on, sometimes God will hide who you are from the enemy. Sometimes God will hide you when you think God is working, when you think God ain't doing nothing. Honey, God is hiding you and God is getting you prepared. She could not reveal her identity because she came out of uh, Kish. She came out of Saul's bloodline, y'all. She came out of the Hebrew, the Jewish. She came out of that bloodline. So when Saul refused to do what God had called him to do, come on, God walked away from that culture. God walked away from that generation right there, y'all. So God was silent. God was silent. So you may feel like God is silent. But honey, God was waiting on you. This is your time. This was my time. Come on. Everything that went on in my bloodline, that God would raise me up to be the first preacher in my bloodline. Come on. That God would come go to the back of the line and bring somebody else to the front of the line that from, to, from a very unlikely place where people never thought that I would be. And I'm just putting myself in there, amen, giving God the glory. But people never thought, I never thought I would be in a place that I'm in today. So I got to say today too, guess what? I'm just as startled as everybody else is. Come on, I'm just as dumbfounded as everybody else is. Sometimes I cry every day sometimes. Because God, I can't believe you did this for me. 
I can't believe you did this for me, God. All the odds were against me. All the odds were against me, God, but this was a predestined moment. God, when I thought you were silent, you were working behind the scene. When I was going to prison, when I was going to jail, when I was out there selling drugs, come on, when I was being molested, when I was being raped, when I was being taken advantage of, come on, when I fit, when I say, God, where you at? When I got to the place where I say, God, you ain't real. Because if you let all these things happen to me, God, you cannot be real. God was working behind the scene. He was working behind the scene for such a time as this, that he would now bring me to the front of the land. To be not just a commissioner, but an apostolic commissioner. He will bring me to the front of the land. Come on, that I am part of the government of Dundee. That I make the decisions over this town. Come on here. He will bring me to the, all the way from the back to the front of the land. Come on, that he will put me in a place that he would allow me to trust. He would trust me with his word as a prophet. He would trust me with his people as a build, as an apostolic builder. Come on, God brought me to the front of the land. So Esther now gets in her place and she tells the king what is going on. She tells the king what is going on. Now the king, come on, begin to have a change of heart. Why? Because Proverbs 21 and 1, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And God said, I control that thing just like I control the river. So now he finds out what is going on. And even though he cannot reverse the law because he has already written it. But Esther, get your pen out, girl. Esther, get your pen out, girl. Get your paper out. I'm going to allow you to write another law, and I'm going to sign it. Come on. And then I'm going to allow, amen, that, 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 that the plot that Haman has actually plotted to kill the king, I'm going to allow it to be revealed. I'm going to allow it to be re I'm going to remember the dream. I'm going to remember that I have, uh, that, that for the people that warned me, that Mordecai was the one that got me the information that I was finna be killed. So I'm going to God, gonna, I'm going to go to sleep one night and the Holy Ghost going to wake me up and say, you know what? You remember Mordecai? You, you, you remember Mordecai uh, brought you that information? You remember so-and-so did this? You remember so-and-so did that? Now it's time for you to reward that person for such a time as this. When everybody finna die, everybody, everybody life is on the land. Now is the time. That the king comes out of his chambers for Esther. Come on. Have Esther to write a law. And he signs it into motion. Against Haman. The one that plotted against you to kill you. Come on. God is no, now going to allow that same thing. That same ditch. That somebody dug for you. That same ditch. That's why you got to be careful how you treat people. Because you're going to reap what you sow. So the same thing Haman. Because he was a prime minister. Come on. And he took a bribe. I forgot to tell y'all about that. He took a bribe. He took treasury. He took money from the treasury. Come on. To have these people killed. To pay the king to have them killed. But now Esther rewrites the Esther rewrite history, y'all. Esther rewrite history and the king signs it in motion. And the same plan that, that Haman had to destroy them. The same rope that he thought he was going to have a parade to kill Mordecai. That same Gallo, that same rope that he was going to kill Mordecai with. Come on, because of fasting and praying. And because this woman was in a place where she needed to be. Come on, that same, come on, that same rope. Haman died from it. And not only did Haman die, 10 of his sons died too. 10 of his sons died too. And then God comes back and allowed Esther to write a law into motion. And the king signed it. That the Jews got my permission to fight. And you know what I thought about when I thought about that? Because you got to think about, you got to think about life. I begin to think about now, you know, they passed this, they passed the law. Well, people can actually have guns now. You, you can actually have guns. There are certain things that you can have in your own house to protect yourself. I thought that being independent and self You can have certain things in your house to protect yourself. To God. Esther to begin to change the system life. for all of her people. She began to, she changed the law, y'all, for, for the whole system. For the whole system. Everything, she changed the law. She made a difference. And guess what? Not only did Esther get promoted, Mordecai got promoted too. He moved into Haman's house. Haman's riches, his falls, came to Hezekiah. Hezekiah got promoted. Hezekiah was like an elevator. God promoted him. Why? Because of the purpose and the plan of God. 
when it looked like God was silent and God's name was not even mentioned. Come on, God was getting ready to drop the fire on you. He was getting ready to drop the fire on you. He was getting ready to drop revelation on you. Come on. This woman changed the whole system that the world could see. That she got her own book. The prophet Esther got her own book, y'all. The girl that came out of a foster home. That was an orphan. Come on. Not only did she get promoted, but her uncle got promoted too. Y'all see the family thing here? See, not only am I going, I'm making a way for my generation. I'm making a way for my legacy, baby. All of them that want to go with me, baby. Come on, I can teach you how to fight. I told you, I will whoop the devil with my eyes closed, y'all. And my hands behind my back. Why? Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And that's what God is doing in this hour. God is raising up a generation right now, y'all. When you think God is silent, God ain't silent. God is moving. Come on, God is getting you ready, honey, to promote you. And here these people is. Proverbs manifested. The wealth of the wicked was laid up for the righteous. The wealth of the wicked was laid up, it was stored up for the righteous. Come on, Haman stored it up, y'all. He was a prime minister. Woo! So y'all knew the wealth he had because he was a prime minister. So he was packing it. And now God drops it on Mordecai. Because his, 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 his niece, Esther, come on, change attitudes. And you know what that sister said? That sister became a risk taker. That sister got courage. See, she forgot about herself. And she said, if I perish, I perish. If I die, let me die. But I'm going to see the king. That's right, woman of God. It's time for us to get our inheritance. See, black people... I've always had a passion for our culture. And they say I was uh, prejudiced. I'm not prejudiced. But I saw the tricks and I saw the schemes that the enemy plays on our culture as a disadvantage. Having us spending all this expensive money on foolishness. But we, And I'm not telling you what to spend your money on. But what I'm telling you is, baby, you better get you some education while you got your big booty. You better get you some education, baby, while you're trying to get you some more breasts. You better get you some education. Come on, why are you trying to get the material things of this world? Because the Bible says that the earth, that stuff going to burn up. But when you die, what would you leave in this earth? Come on, when they say ashes to ashes and dust to dust, what have you left in the earth? What kind of impact have you made for your generation? What have you left your child? Come on, everybody living in the project? And ain't nothing wrong with living in the project if you got to live there. But be smart in the project. What are you leaving for them? Shaking up? This is how we do. We shake up. Everybody in the bloodline shake up. Nobody gets married. That when the man die, you don't get nothing. They don't even put your name on the obituary. They don't even honor you. They don't even honor you. Come on, baby. You live with that man for 20 years and you got nothing. You got nothing. You got nothing and your children got nothing. Come on. It's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to wake up and understand, use the gifts and the talents and the abilities that God gave us. Come on. Don't you know? Don't you know? Don't you know who you are, woman of God, man of God? Don't you know who you are? Don't you know if I can sell drugs and make $10,000 a week for the devil? Don't you know that my latter shall be better than my former? I went to Bermuda and preached the gospel, baby. And just for one service, they gave me $5,000. When I left Bermuda, I came out of Bermuda with over $12,000. Come on, for just telling the people, God going to give you a new heart. But it was anointed. It was anointed. Because God said, my latter is going to be better than my former. And you got to know that too. You got to know it. You got to come out of the trenches, baby. You got to come out of the dumb school. You got to come out of the school of ignorance. You got to become an educated Christian. How can you be a Christian and you won't even read your word? How can you be a Christian and you're standing in every prophetic land? 
Don't you know if somebody give you a prophecy? Don't you know the Bible say prophecy come with condition? Don't you know you got a war, a good warfare over that prophetic word? That word ain't coming to pass just like that. Some of y'all need to stop being so gullible and get somewhere where you can be accountable. Where will you get your inheritance? So the Bible says you come in as a thief and a robber, it ain't gonna last. He said, you got to come through the door, baby. And Jesus said, I am the door. I am the door. So when you come in, when you come in through the door, when you come in through fasting, when you come in through praying, when you come in through being equipped with the word of God, when you come in being strong in the Lord and the power of his might, the enemy don't have legal rights to you, baby. He don't have legal rights. But the enemy knows some of you all out there that you're not in that place where you need to be. So people know they can just tell you anything. Stop saying that's what my preacher say. And stop start saying this is what God say. Start asking questions. Start asking questions. Start putting a demand on the man or the woman of God, whoever your leader is. Make them preach. Come on, anybody can hoop and holler. You just in your emotions. But it's time now, baby. Esther went and got her stuff. And her uncle Mordecai, her uncle Mordecai, wouldn't let that sister back up, y'all. Wouldn't let her back up, cuz. Wouldn't let him back up, sister Pacina. Yes, I did. You got to get out of your comfort zone and jump. How will you know if your parachute will open if you don't? That's right. You got to get out of your comfort zone. Amen. So I want to come and encourage y'all today because, you know, I got to do the training line in the morning. I was getting ready to go study for my training line in the morning, which I'm going to do it anyway. But guess what? God said, no, you need to come and encourage my people. He said, this ain't even for everybody. If you don't read your Bible and if you don't study, you don't even know what I'm talking about. No way. I'm talking over your head. You know what you're going to say? Oh, she too deep. No, you too shallow. Tell the truth. You too shallow. You can't get with me because you ain't studying. You ain't reading your Bible. Because let me tell you something. When his disciples was on the road to Emma's baby, and when Jesus began to talk to them, come on, he had not even revealed himself who he was. They thought he was dead and still in the grave. But just the word that came out of his mouth. You know what they said? Did not our hearts burn within? Did not our hearts burn within as he spoke truth to us? So well, you're going to always say that. That's right. You're too shallow. People too shallow. And they'll tell you quick, oh, she too deep. She too deep. And I'm trying to introduce you to Jesus. Because everything I'm saying, you can back it up with the word. See, you got to be like the Berearians in Acts 17 and 11. The Bible said they didn't just take the preacher word for it. They went home to see if what Paul was telling them was the truth. And we know Paul wrote three-fourths of the letters. He wrote three-fourths of this, this, this letter. But they did not just take what Paul said. They said, I'm going home. I want to see this thing for myself. Come on. I'm finna stop scrolling. And I'm finna get in the word. I'm finna discipline myself. And I'm finna get in the word. Because I ain't finna be deceived by nobody. So let me go see what this preacher said was the truth. So my spirit can bear witness with it. So my spirit can bear witness with it. We had a young lady in the service today. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. We had a young lady in the service today. The spirit of God was on that sister so strong. As the prophet was breaking that word down. The, 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 the power of God was so strong on the sister. Her countenance had changed. You can see the glory of God all over her. And I thought about Paul in Acts the 14th chapter. You can go read it for yourself. I think it's Acts 14 and 6. I ain't got my Bible here. But I think it's Acts 14 and 6 or somewhere in Acts 14. The Bible said there was a man that was sitting up in the temple. He was born impotent, had never in his life walked. But Paul perceived, he perceived, see that apostolic had him locked in. Paul perceived, Paul perceived that this man had faith to be healed. And Paul in his boldness, come on, discern that thing. He told that man, get up and walk. The man had never walked before, but the word got him up, y'all. So if you can't shout out the word now, you ain't getting up when the trumpet sound. The Bible said the dead in Christ going to rise first when the trumpet is sound. So if you ain't shouting now, you ain't going to be able to shout then. 
But the man got up. This sister, the power of God was so strong on this sister today. And God just had me to touch her hand. And when I touched her hand, she thought I was just going to touch her hand. But baby, she did not know, honey. That was going to be a Mary and Elizabeth moment. That was going to be a, a Mary and Elizabeth moment. And guess what? Baby, it was over. It was a wrap. It was a wrap. And then when I got through ministering to her, the prophet came in. And it was a double TKO. The sister was birthed out in the Holy Ghost today. The sister spoke in tongues. The sister got her deliverance on today. And the girl is a changed woman today. By the power of God. By the power of God. So it's not that I'm too deep. Or the person that's too deep. You just too shallow. You too shallow. And when your pastor preach. You ought to be sitting on the edge of your seat. Saying you know what. You better preach. You know what? You better make my baby leap. You know what? You better come on with it. Come on, I'm going through a crisis and I need you to bring me out. Come on, I don't need no emotions today. Come on, but I need the pure gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because I need to go to another level in God. Y'all don't want to have no church right now. But see, I came off my sofa today for somebody. I don't know who it is. I know it ain't for everybody. But if it's for you, that you feel like God ain't been answering you, you thought God wasn't moving. Honey, God working behind the scene. God is getting you ready. He's getting you ready to bring you to the front of the land. He's getting you ready. And let me, let me share this in with y'all too. When Mordecai got Esther ready, she had to saturate herself for a whole year. She didn't sleep with the king first, y'all. She didn't sleep with the king because of her beauty. See, if you sleep with him, come on, baby. He may disrespect you for the rest of your life because you gave it up first. You gave it up first. So he already know what you like. So he may not never trust you no more going to church. Why? Because you gave it up going to church. You gave it up going to church. So how I know you ain't down there to the church still giving it up? You didn't make me wait, baby. You didn't make me wait. Come on, while I was choosing you, you didn't make me wait. Come on, I already know what you like. I already know what you do. I already know what you would do up under pressure. You got to make him wait, y'all. Make him wait. Amen. So I pray that I have blessed somebody today. I know I did. I don't know who it was. I know it wasn't for everybody. But I encourage God's people today. Y'all get in y'all word out there. Get in y'all word. Start studying your word. Get what somebody can teach you. The Bible says you can't hear without a preacher. And they cannot preach except he be sent. Don't go back through them church doors, leaving out of there with nothing. Don't come out of there. Don't come out. Don't go in empty. Come out empty. Come out with something. They say, you know what? Did not our hearts burn? Come out with the fire. Come out with the fire. Amen? So guess what? I'm going to end this live right now. But before I do that, yes, I'm going to ask you about your money now. If you want to sow, you don't have to, but if you want to seal this deal, and if you want to sow into this ministry right now, and I know you got so many people out there that beat y'all out of so much money until you think somebody always wants your money. It's not that. The Bible say they that preach the gospel shall live by the gospel. Paul said, if I sow unto you spiritual things, it is only fair that you sow unto me the natural things. Come on, seal this word today. In order for you to get a harvest, baby, you got to have a seed. You got to have a seed. And of this apostolic word. And when I say apostolic, I'm not talking about a denomination. I'm talking about the doctrines of the apostles that are in Acts 2, 42 through 46. Amen. So anyway, if this word has blessed you today, cash out apostolic woman. Cash out your girl at apostolic woman. I'm not going to ask you what to give. You don't give but a dollar, five dollars, whatever the Lord left on your heart. If God left anything on your heart. Let's do it like that. Go ahead and bless the woman of God today, okay? Apostolic Woman Cash App or PayPal at Apostle Mary Richardson. And y'all go check out my website too. Kingdom Development Apostolic Institute. Kingdom Development Apostolic Institute. I have some classes, some trainings that God has allowed me to build. And guess what? My main classes, a lot of them is not going to start to September. Come on. But go take a look at what I have out there. I'm a trainer. 
God has always told me I'm a trainer. I'm called to train and equip the body of Christ. And guess what? I am recognized, not governed, but I am recognized as a ministry through Tallahassee an Institute. Go check it out. Go to, uh, what you call it? Sunbiz.gov. And look up, Apos I mean, Kingdom Development Apostolic Institute. Go in there and check out my classes. Go in there and check out my trainings. Amen. And get equipped. Get equipped. Get prepared for where God is taking you. So you will learn how to function in your office. And you will learn how to function in your gift. Come on. I'm a commissioner. Guess what? They kept telling me. They say, and this is what I've been hearing since I've been over here. Learn the charter, girl. They say, learn the charter. Whatever you do. Sunshine law is good. But learn the charter. Because you know what the charter is? The charter gives me my responsibilities. And it's my function on how I function as a commissioner. Because I've never been a commissioner before. This is my first time. This is my first time. But I have a charter. Come on. To give me instructions and directions on how to execute the plan of God to carry out my assignment in the next four years. So when those four years is up, guess what? I want to be a smart commissioner. I want to be a brilliant commissioner. I don't want to be one to just go sit on Tuesday nights. I want to be the one that make a difference in my community. The one that make a difference in the lives of God's people that I'm called to. Same thing being an apostle. I understand my office. That's why I can execute it the way that I do. Because I'm in training, even right now with my own apostle, Apostle Nona Parker. I'm in training with her right now. Come on, every fourth Saturday, we have what we call ap uh, apostles training. Come on. Every other Monday night, I'm in the Shema Prophets. Come on, the school of the prophets. I'm learning how a prophet is supposed to act. Yeah, God called me to be a prophet from my mother's womb. But you still got to have somebody to teach you and to train you so you can be effective in the kingdom of God, okay? So God bless y'all. I got to go. I speak blessings over you. I speak blessings over you. I declare and I decree, amen, that God will bring you to the front of the land. I declare and I decree when you thought God was silent, honey, God was preparing you and God was getting you ready. So don't be discouraged, but get the right people in your life. Jeremiah 1 and 12, God said he watches over his word to perform it. Timothy couldn't be powerful without Paul. Ruth could not be powerful without Naomi, y'all. Joshua could not be powerful without Moses. Come on. John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus. Jesus trained and equipped his disciples. I'm going to come back and do a whole nother training on training, okay? So God bless y'all. I see the numbers are going down. Because when you start talking about that money, that's what people do. Amen. But anyway, for the ones that do want to sow out there, God bless you. Amen. This has been your girl, Apostle Mary Richardson. And until the next time, amen, you stay blessed and you stay with God, whatever you do. I don't care how hard it get. Stay right there with God. Because when you think he's silent, God is working. So blessings on y'all.